So this uh, research article uh, titled Serving the Brain uh, and Heterogeneity with Single Cell RNA Sequencing of Multi-Texture Biopsies uh, is, uh, kind of illustrates a use case I'd like to uh, uh, adapt for the NeuroCave generalization into the biological uh, cancer research uh, uh, se uh, sequencing uh, analysis space. Uh, so what they do is they uh, they sampled uh, 15 patients, uh, got a total of 75 biopsies, uh, flowed the cells uh, in, in from these biopsies into uh, into single well plates with uh, the so for a total of about uh, a couple thousand individual cells and ran the full genomes of all these thousands of cells and they got the one the one of those data sets they uh, visualizations in this heat map shows uh, uh, the rows are all uh, are each cell's gene expression patterns and each pixel column is a gene is a gene's expression levels in all of the cells and uh, they're uh, organized into chromosomes. So there's 23 groups of these gene expression bars. And uh, so, so there's uh, these five different clusters that they have uh, uh, organized in this hierarchical clustering uh, algorithm. And uh, the, a lot of these uh, chromosomes are, uh, their, their copy numbers vary uh, correlated to the clusters of the cells. So uh, that's some interesting information they they got. They could also uh, display this information as a two-dimensional uh, dimensionality reduction of the cell data of the cell's gene expression data. This is uh, probably a T-SNE uh, algorithm, and they can color the cells in the plot uh, either by the patient's. Uh, 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 one if, to uh, the color uh, signifies the patient here, or uh, by the uh, cluster number that signifies cluster membership. Uh, also, using these violin plots, they can identify which genes are the most highly uh, differentially expressed genes per uh, cluster, and and, and uh, look up their gene uh, uh, functions uh, and find out which. Uh, 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 gene, which, uh, uh, what cluster, uh, what uh, function these clusters of cells uh, serve. Uh, so uh, they have some of these genes are indicative of immune function. Uh, some genes here are uh, indicative of tumor function. And one of the uh, interesting novel discoveries this team made uh, was uh, these genes they found uh, expressed in a cluster of cells uh, that indicate the cells have a cilia on their surface. So they, uh, in little hairs, they wiggle them around and uh, migrate from the tumor core to distal sites throughout the brain. And uh, these hidden gene, for one, uh, th is uh, indicative of this functionality. Uh, so uh, they can colorize the the uh, T SNE uh, scatter plot, uh, not with the cluster identity color, but with a heat map uh, just showing the expression levels of Hyden in each cell. And they've shown that the Hyden expressing cells uh, are most highly uh, expressed in this cluster here, which is. Uh, indicative of uh, color uh, cluster number 10, which is shown in this coloring, the cluster-based coloring. And the way that uh, this discovery is done, it takes a lot of these visualizations to to show this, uh, this discovery process, uh, which can be uh, streamlined in one 3D uh, representation here uh, using NeuroCave. So I have uh, the, uh, the status set imported in here. And we have uh, 
Uh, I have several different uh, clustering uh, algorithms. Uh, this is MDS. Uh, and I have uh, the cells displayed over here. The cells are displayed as spheres. Uh, I can also display the genes also with the MDS clustering uh, algorithms place uh, coordinates. Uh, I also have uh, uh, computed the T-SNE coordinates of both of this data set as well. It looks like the cluster separation is a bit better using T-SNE. Well, there's the T-SNE genes. And so right now they're colored according to the 12 clusters uh, that are that have been uh, identified using the clustering algorithm. Uh, one feature I implemented here is uh, being able to adjust the glyph size for uh, the left and the right separately. So uh, there's fewer cells, so uh, they take up less space, so I can make them bigger. And the genes, there, uh, there's more of them, so I can make them smaller to have less clutter and see the edges better. And uh, so to perform uh, a gene of interest based coloring, I have this uh, helicase B tetraspan and 31 gene that I'm interested in the status set. So I've uh, created a coloring that uh, highlights uh, cells harboring those uh, uh, this uh, uh, this fusion of helicase B and tetraspan and 31 uh, that was formed in uh, maybe a cancer cell uh, uh, had a, some chromosome damage that was repaired in those two chromosomes and they splice those genes together and uh, so uh, the one feature that I've implemented uh, uh, with the VR uh, implementation, which is now obsolete, WebVR is deprecated. I have to port this to WebXR now. But if I uh, enable VR, I can uh, have uh, the name of the glyph displayed next to it. Unfortunately, it's obscured by these other glyphs. So uh, it was 260 D7. Uh, so that's uh, a plate uh, 260. And the plates are 96 well plates with eight rows, A through H, and 12 columns, 1 through 12. So this is 260 D7. So uh, this one's. Uh, there's 259H5. If we uh, click that one, it'll it should light up its edges, uh, except the threshold isn't very well defined. But I'll light up the uh, five most strongest edges to the most connected cells, and we'll change this to 10. So you can browse these and the you hover over a cell to or over any glyph and it shows the its name. So so we've uh, selected H5 over here and we can also turn on bipartite mode to see so that the edges a bipartite graph is uh, uh, it consists of two types of nodes like this cells and genes spheres and cubes but for bipartite the edges connect the different 
types of nodes to uh, to different nodes rather than to the same nodes. So this will allow me to browse which genes are the most highly expressed genes in each cell. BP stands for bipartite. Uh, BT stands for brain tumor. S6 stands for sample 6. T stands for tumor. There'd be a P there if it was a periphery. And U stands for unpanned. They have uh, different uh, cell types that they capture in uh, chem the chemistry in the test tubes bef and before doing the sequencing. So uh, these were the ones that didn't get caught in any of those filters. So uh, the way this bipartite uh, representation works is uh, the cell that's selected is connected to the origin which uh, holds a tiny cube that's surrounded by all these spheres and over here on the gene side there's a tiny sphere that's connected to all these cubes make these glyphs even smaller so we can really see the edges so you can see which genes here Yeah, make it a little smaller. So there's one that's connected that's NBA and GPNBB FTL. So there we can browse which genes these are, and we can. Uh, highlight the genes and this will show the, the the other cells that that express these genes so there are some of the other cells that are also express this gene so you can walk through uh, from cell to gene to cell and build a, 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 the network that 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 a uh, revolves around that that's centered around this helicase B fusion you can switch between fusion uh, coloring and cluster coloring
so far we're just working with uh, this cluster of genes and this cluster of cells. You can turn the number of edges up to 20. Those are the 20 top edges. You can also compare genes to genes. You can compare a gene network to, to another gene network or a bipartite gene network to a regular gene network. Well, so now it looks like there's uh, some activity across clusters here with the genes that we've selected. Um, So I also have uh, UMAP clustering coordinate system, which are all pre-calculated. like a uniform manifold AP something. <laughs> Now the slider shows you uh, the, you can change the settings of the slider to light up uh, a different number of the top uh, most connected edges. Uh, however, uh, what I'd like to implement here is a uh, gradient based uh, uh, edge visualization that shows at a glance the strength of the connections between cells and genes. I want to demonstrate Here, this is a video game called Elite. And as you can see here, there's a, there they have um this is also a a, gra a graph representation of uh some star systems in the Milky Way galaxy. They're probably fictitious, but I like how you can zoom out of the detailed view and you can see the whole Milky Way and that can be like a brain and then you can go back in 
and as you can see, these edges here are shown as these uh, arrows of varying thicknesses. So uh, this is uh, in this video game is like a strategy game. So uh, these uh, signify uh, trade routes uh, between these interstellar uh, economies for the different uh, uh, planets and the different star systems here. Um, but you can zoom in to various different views. Uh, but I think that the uh, representations of the gene of the gene product interactions, the protein protein interactions encoded by the genes uh, represented in the uh, uh, dimensionality reduction or TSNE uh, representations could be visualized this way and the colors and the and the rates and the thicknesses of these edges could uh, signify the strength and the type of gene gene in, or pro gene or protein protein gene interactions uh, and uh, also they have this uh, route here you can uh, you can you can also uh, so this would be like a travel route to get from one star system to a distant one. That's if you can only do it through uh, so many hops from one system to another. But you uh, this would also be useful for uh, in genes and and also you can uh, they have like a little display here that uh, shows the economies and the uh, uh, political structures in the states of of the different star systems. So uh, that could uh, maybe a panel like that could show um, some stats about different genes in the network. And so, this, so I think this would be useful for visualizing both uh, the, uh, the the connectome on the uh, macro scale as well as. Uh, gene protein interactions on the nanoscale and so you can move around here Load it again on this faster computer that I'm logged into. So what you can do is set the coloring to the fusion gene of interest and we can 
close up the visualization to uh, multi-dimensional scaling there or to uh, the U map and the use case here we can so we can uh, do a just kind of a discovery exercise where we highlight maybe the top the top nine or ten edges and we uh, select all of them to kind of build a network of Helicase BT span 31 fusion uh, harboring uh, cells in this uh, cluster, it's in this cell cluster. And then we can switch to bipartite mode. Make the glyphs for the genes smaller so you can see which ones are connected to the cell network. Then we can click on these genes. And so there's, we can find out which cells. switch between the different uh, dimensionality reduction algorithms. And light up the cells that are also that also express these genes. These are all connected to the uh, sphere at the origin, which uh, connects the where so the edges go into here, and then they 
come out of this uh, cube at the origin and go to the cells to show which ones they're lighting up. And change the, the highlighting back, the coloring back to a cluster. We can change the edges back to regular graph, connecting the genes to genes and cells to cells. Now we can see the networks of all the genes that we've highlighted based on the bipartite graph mode. These are all the cells and they're how they're connected. These are the cells that have been expressing genes that were also expressed in the helicase BT span fusion harboring genes. So we can switch between bipartite and regular. the different colorings. So now we have some other cells that our inner group. Make these a little smaller to see the differences. Looks like this is the only gene cluster that we're getting any edges in. Let's increase this threshold to 20 top genes, or top edges.
There we go. That cell actually had a gene in another cluster. FAM 11 OD. I'd like to have like a reset button that turns all the edges off. What I can do is, this is a pretty small gene cluster. I can change the coloring back to fusion. Or, uh, no, I like that coloring. Once we can switch back to regular mode. We can take a look at the cell similarity networks that we've uh, displayed in this discovery uh, process. Looks like it's pretty rich. Looks like I tried changing this subject while this was still in the middle of changing. Didn't seem to register. there. So, so we have a gene network in this cluster. It's pretty much entirely in the cluster. We have That gene Looks like that gene cluster is connected, has a lot of connections to this one.
this gene cluster seems to be very cliquey. There aren't a lot of connections between these genes and other clusters of genes. Let's just click on a bunch of genes in this cluster and see if we can get any connections to other clusters. No, nope, looks like it's still staying within its own borders. This is a very, very good cluster. Probably a real big one. Yeah, this cluster is really clicky. There's still some pretty good separation. Well, that was fun. Maybe I'll discover something after a couple more hours and uh, some more development. Well, let me know what you think.